Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Bible Exploration this morning. I hope everybody is staying warm and everyone is safe. Um, I just wanted to welcome you this morning um, at Bible Exploration today. We are going to be learning about the character trait of diligence, as we've been talking about the last few weeks, um, as we've been doing character by God's design. And today we're going to be focusing on um, where diligence focuses on the work that God has given us and specifically diligently obeying God's word. So we're going to be talking about the importance of God's word. And there's a few things that you're going to need today. So I wanted you to have some time to get those things together. So while I'm talking this morning and getting ready, um, if you have paper, you're probably going to need more than one piece of paper. Um, if you have an index card, you can grab an index card, or even if you have something that's a little bit of heavier paper, um, you're going to need some scissors. You'll need crayons or markers if you have them. Um, you'll need some different colors today, and specifically you'll need colors later. You'll need a yellow, an orange, and like a light blue teal color, and I also had a black marker as well. But if you just get your set of crayons or if you get your set of markers, you should be all set and you'll have everything that you need for today. And you'll need them for different things as we do them. So um, first thing I want you to do, and of course you'll also need, I totally forgot, you're going to need your Bible. So I just assumed everybody had that with them too. So you wanna make sure that you have your Bible and like I said, you wanna grab some paper and some um, crayons or some markers or some coloring utensils. So we are going to start today um, learning about Ezra and how Ezra was obedient to God's word. So we're actually going to open up to in Ezra. I'd like everybody to turn to Ezra and you're going to turn to chapter 8 and we are going to start in verse 15 today. So <clears throat> now Ezra uh, was obedient and he arranged for Levites to come to Israel. So it says here that he assembled the exiles at the Ha'ava Canal and camped there for three days while I went over the list of people and the priests who have arrived. So he sent <clears throat> for those people who were the leaders. And there by the Ahava Canal, I gave orders for all of us to fast and humble ourselves. I jumped to 21, verse 21 before our God. We prayed that he would give us a safe journey and protect us, our children and our goods as we traveled. For I was ashamed to ask the king for soldiers and horsemen to accompany us and protect us from enemies along the way. After all, we had told the king our God's hand of protection is on all who worship him, but his fierce anger rages against those who abandon him. So we fasted and earnestly prayed that our God would take care of us, and he heard our prayer. I appointed 12 leaders of the priests to be in charge of transporting the silver, the gold, the gold bowls, and the other items that the king and his council, his officials, and all the people of Israel had presented for the temple of God. I weighed the treasures as I gave it to them and found the totals to be as follows. 24 tons of silver, 7,500 pounds of silver articles, 7,500 pounds of gold, 20 gold bowls equal in value to 1,000 gold coins, two fine articles of polished bronze as precious as gold. And as I said to the priests, you and these treasures have been set apart as holy to the Lord. This silver and gold is a voluntary offering to the Lord, the God of our ancestors. Guard these treasures well until you present them to the leading priests, the Levites, and the leaders of Israel, who will weigh them at the storerooms of the Lord's temple in Jerusalem. So the priests and the Levites accepted the task of transporting these treasures of silver and gold to the temple of our God in Jerusalem. We broke camp at the Ahava Canal on April 19th and started off to Jerusalem and the gracious hand of our God protected us and saved us from enemies and bandits along the way. So we arrived safely in Jerusalem where we rested for three days. And on the fourth day after our arrival, the silver, gold, and other valuables were weighed 
at the temple of our God and entrusted to Mirmoth, son of Uriah the priest, and to Eleazar, son of Phinehas, along with Josephad, son of Jehu Jeshua, and Nodiah, son of Benui, both of whom were Levites. Everything was accounted for by number and weight, and the total weight was officially recorded. Then the exiles, who had come out of captivity, sacrificed burnt offerings to the God of Israel. They presented 12 bulls for all the people of Israel, as well as 96 rams and 70, <clears throat> 77 male lambs. They also offered 12 male goats as a sin offering. All this was given as burnt offerings to the Lord. The king's decrees were delivered in his highest officers, and the governors of the province west of the Euphrates River, who then cooperated by supporting the people and the temple of God. Now Ezra chose to listen to God, and he helped the people obey God after they built God's temple. A temple is like a church. So what I would like you to do is I would like you to take one of your paper drawings, like this, or your pieces of paper, and we're gonna make a drawing. And I would like you to right now to draw yourself a temple on your paper. Let's do the same. So take a little time and make what you think looks like a temple on your paper. Now, after the temple was built, Ezra wanted to help people choose to listen to God. And he also taught the Israelites to bring gifts for the temple, even giving up some of their own special things that were really important to them so that God's temple could be even better. So what I'd like you to do now is I want you to draw a gift of something in your temple and draw it on the paper. It can be anything. Think about what kind of gift if you had to give something special that you might give. I'm drawing myself a, I usually put my gifts in kind of a box or a present or bag, so I'm putting my gift and something like that inside my temple. Now, as you're drawing your gift in your temple and you're drawing, how do you know what God is telling you when you think about when God's speaking to you. Now, Ezra, he listened to God and he followed God's plan. And I have a plan for what you should draw today. So what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to turn your paper over. So now that you have, you can see I have my temple, my gift inside. I want you to turn your paper over so you have a blank side on the back. And when you turn your paper over, I want you to think about this as I tell you, you're gonna draw exactly what I tell you. And I want you to listen really closely and I want you to follow my directions exactly like I tell you. So I'm gonna give you these instructions and I want you again to follow exactly what I say and follow them exactly the way I said and go ahead and draw this for me. So in the middle of your paper, I want you to draw a big square. Inside the square, I want you to draw a smiley face and at the top of your paper, draw a squiggly line. And in the bottom, I want you to draw clouds. In the clouds, I want you to draw stars and put polka dots all around the outside of your square lining it. I'm gonna wait to give you some time. And then I'd like you to show me your paper. I'm just gonna give you a few more seconds while you're drawing those things. Now, I know some of you might be thinking, maybe I didn't get all those, or I don't know what all those directions are. Just try your best. I normally would repeat myself but I'm not supposed to in this case. So I'd like to see, I give you five more seconds to finish up your drawing. And then I'm gonna have you show me your paper. So I'm gonna show you my paper. So this is what I had asked you to do, was to draw a square in the middle of your paper. Then you had to draw a smiley face inside I asked for you to do a squiggly line at the top, clouds at the bottom, put stars inside the clouds, and then put polka dots outside 
the square lining the outside of your square. Now, I wonder, did you follow my directions? Were you able to draw that same picture or something that looked kind of close to that picture? Well, you may or may not have because I kind of read those directions really quickly and I didn't repeat myself expecting you to kind of follow those directions. Thinking about that, was it easy or was it difficult? It probably would have made it easier if I had repeated myself and said, okay, or if I had given some time and given you one step at a time and given some time for you to think and to draw in between each step. Now, God is way more patient than I was just giving you those directions really quickly and expecting you to draw that. I gave you all those directions so fast and you probably didn't hear them all, but God gives us the Bible to read over and over again so that we know what to do, directions in here for us, because it gives us good directions and we diligently can obey God's word because in here are the directions for us. Now, I'm gonna teach you a little song, something that can help you to remember that we can use God, God's word and that we should be diligently obeying God's word, okay? So, here it goes. We can listen to God every day. We can listen to God every day. We can listen to God and obey his holy word. We can listen to God every day. We can listen to God every day. We can listen to God every day. We can listen to God and obey his holy word. We can listen to God every day. So that is just a little song to help you to remember about that we can listen to God and obey his word. I want you to think about somebody that is either not with you right now and is not hearing this um, and someone who you could possibly teach that song to. Think of who it is and when you might teach that person the song. And also think about what do you do to listen to God? What kinds of things do you do? Do you spend time with God? Do you talk with God? Do you pray with God? Maybe you listen to God when you're reading your Bible or maybe when you're reading your devotions. And what do you talk to God about? So I wanna to talk to you about, let's go back to when we read in Ezra, go back to chapter eight and we look at chap, uh, verse 21. He said there that when he gave orders for all of them to fast and humble ourselves before our God, that he said we prayed that he would give us safe journey and protect us, our children and our goods as we traveled. We can thank God and we can pray to God too. The Bible says to pray all the time. So praying is one way that we can diligently obey God's word. Now we're actually going to um, do a few other things too when we talk, we're gonna look at this. I want you to get another piece of paper right now. And when you do this, I'm gonna ask you, we're gonna read some more scriptures in the Bible. And as I'm reading these scriptures, I'm gonna ask you to draw or to write some things down on the second piece of paper that you have. So what I'd like you to do right now, is I want you to take a little bit of time and I want you to think about, because we just prayed about, or we just read about in the Bible about when Ezra was, they were praying for God's protection. I want you to draw or write about a time that you and your family needed God's protection and how God protected you. I want you to think about that. You can draw a picture. I'm gonna draw one right now. One just came into my mind. So remember, you're drawing about a time that you or your family needed God's protection. I'm not the best artist here, but I'll try my best. Okay, I drew a picture of a car. And I drew a picture specifically of a car because we have family that we go visit to in Pennsylvania, usually a couple times a year. And whenever we go on our trip, we used to always, we always pray um, on our way as we start leaving, we say a prayer for protection. 
as we're traveling. And God has always been good to us and has protected us as we've traveled. And sometimes when we've traveled, we've hit storms or things like that along, along the way. And we've always been protected as we've gone. God has protected myself and my family. So that's one thing that I was thinking about when um, I just asked you to write about a time when you or your family needed God's protection. So what we're going to do right now, too, is we're going to practice respecting God's word. We're going to write some prayers about some promises that God gives us in the Bible, just as Ezra did. So the first thing we're going to do, I'm going to read from Psalm 145. So if you have your Bibles, turn to Psalm 145, but keep your paper and your pen or your marker handy. So Psalm 145. And we are going to turn to verse 20. Okay, I'm going to read it for you. Read along with me. The Lord protects all those who love him, but he destroys the wicked. I want you to write a prayer to God that you'll show your love to him more and more and that he'll keep you safe. So go ahead, write something down. Write a prayer to God that you'll show your love to him more and more and that he'll keep you safe. We're going to look at another verse as well. The next verse is going to be in James 1, 5. Let's look and see what that prayer will be about. So in James 1, 5. Remember, James is in the New Testament. We're going to go towards the end of your Bible. After Hebrews, all right, James 1, verse 5. If you need wisdom, ask our generous God, and he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking. Okay, so think about that. Write a prayer to God about how we can make wise choices. And trust me, this is not for kids. This is for adults too. <laughs> think about that. If you need wisdom... Ask our generous God, and he will give it to you. So think about writing a prayer down to God that he will help you to make wise choices. And then we're going to go one more. 1 John 1, 9. All right. Let's see what this verse says and what we can pray to God. So we're going to go a little bit further in the New Testament here. We're going to go to 1 John. All right, 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. But if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all wickedness. I want you to right now think of a prayer that you can write down to God asking him to forgive you for the things that you've done wrong. Maybe there's some things that you can think of that maybe this week you need to ask for forgiveness from and you need to ask God for forgiveness. And remember too, if it's something with a person too, then we can ask for forgiveness from that person too. Now, after thinking about these verses and me reading these verses, I want you to think about which of these verses from God's word from the Bible means the most to you. And why? And what can you say to show you trust God to do the things that these verses say? Now, one thing that we can do is we can diligently obey God's word. And that's by believing what's in here and what it says. When we believe it, we can pray about it. And we can know for sure that God will answer our prayers, just as he answered Ezra's prayers to protect the Israelites on their journey coming back to the new temple and bringing all those things back. Now, we are going to create something to kind of help us to remember about diligently obeying God's word. So I had asked if you had an index card um, that you could use that. We're going to be making some little bookmarks. So even if you don't have a bookmark, what you can do is you can cut 
out of your piece of paper. You can cut a little strip that looks this, like this, and, or it can be a bigger strip. And what I'm gonna ask you to do, if you have the index card, the easiest thing to do is to fold your index card in half, open it up, and you are going to cut right on the fold in the middle, and you'll have two strips, so you'll have two bookmarks. You can start by making one with me today, and if you want, you could always make another for somebody else to help them remember how to diligently obey God's word. Remember, we're learning about the character of diligence, just like Ezra had. And today we're focusing on diligently obeying God's word and what's in the Bible. So once you have got your strip of paper, you're gonna fold it into fourths. So the easiest way is to fold it in half and fold it in half one more time. There we go. And then when you open it up, you're gonna see the four equal sections. And you're even gonna see little spaces where you can see lines. Now the easiest thing that you can do, which I did, is we are going to first, on the first one, you are going to color the first one orange. And you can see actually, if I hold this up close, that I wrote orange and I have, my O is really emphasized. I circled it several times because I want the O to stand out. If you want, you can even underline the O and I'll tell you why we're gonna do that afterwards. So you're gonna color the top part orange. The next one underneath you're gonna color, it's supposed to be gold. So my closest thing that I had to gold was yellow. The next section, you wanna leave that white. And the section at the very bottom is like a teal color. I feel like mine's looking a little greenish as I'm showing this to you on the video, but it's like a teal blue color. So it's like that blue green color, that teal. So again, let me show you. You want orange, yellow, you're gonna leave the next one white, and then teal on the bottom. And then you can write the colors right there, orange, gold, white, and teal. Now, I want you to remember, and the reason I said, so on the first letters, you wanna make the O stand out, or you can underline it. You want to, in fact, where's my black marker? I was going to underline, here we go. You underline the O in orange, then you can underline the G for gold, you can underline the W for white, and then the T for teal. And like I said, I went over them, so my O, G, W, and T stand out. Now this is what I want you to remember, they each stand for something. The O is obey, the G is God's, the W is word, and the T is today. Obey God's word today. So this bookmark can go right into any book I'm reading. It can go right into my Bible, right here. I can close that up. And I can look at it and when I see these colors, I can think, oh, oh, O for orange is obey. G for gold is God's word today. So if you want, you can make this for yourself. And like I said, I had a second one for my other half. You could make another one and you could give it to somebody. And then when somebody goes, well, what is this? What is orange, gold, white, teal? You can say, oh, this is to help you remember to obey God's word today. And you can tell them about what you learned today. Now, something else I want you to think about is we're gonna play a little game. So if you want, you can stand, but you can take anything you have. You could take one of your markers. Um, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna follow my instructions, but you're only gonna follow my instructions when um, I'm holding the Bible above my head. If I'm not holding the Bible above my head, then you don't wanna follow my directions. Let's see how well this goes. So I'm trusting that those of you on the other side of the screen that you're following the directions. It's kind of like Simon says, if you played Simon Says. And you, you can have, um, it said, you can make sure that you're doing, you wanna hold something in your hand. So you wanna have something, like I said, you can have a marker, 
Um, if you have some other object, you can take it, your crayon, um, tape, whichever you might have. Okay, so here we go. Are we ready? Trade your object with the person next to you, if you have someone next to you. If not, you can keep it. Um, hold your object in one hand. Hold your object in the air above your head. Hold your object and take three steps forward. Put your object on the floor. Now, if you put it on the floor, you aren't supposed to. The Bible's not above my head. <laughs> All right. Place your object gently on the floor. Bring your object up to the front of the room and leave it there. Grab your object and sit down. <laughs> Hopefully you're still standing or not sitting or wherever you were doing kneeling because the Bible wasn't over my head. That was the last one. So you can put your object down. Now, when did this game get tricky? I'm sure it got tricky when I was moving my Bible because if my Bible wasn't above my head, you weren't supposed to follow my directions. And sometimes we can get confused about things. And sometimes we can feel confused about things in the Bible. Now, Ezra and the Israelites, they listened to God and they obeyed what God told them to do. And whenever we have a choice to make, we can think about God's word and what God's word says. And we can do the same thing and what God's word says for us to do. And that helped Ezra and the Israelites and it can help us always make the right choice when we are feeling a little confused and not sure what to do. We can diligently obey God's word when we use it and we can use it to make good choices. So I'd like to end right now with a prayer um, and remembering to help us to remember um, to diligently obey God's word. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this word today, and we thank you, Lord Jesus, for your word that guides us. Please help us to diligently listen to your word and to make wise choices, Lord Jesus, and to obey all that you say. We thank you for this time together. I thank you for all the people here. Please keep everyone safe, Lord Jesus, and we thank you. We pray for a great week ahead. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. A couple things I just want to leave you with is a challenge or two for you to try for this week. So one of the things is to ask a parent to read some of the Bible to you um, as we learned about making um, diligently obeying God's word. And part of that is reading God's word and knowing God's word. So you can ask somebody to read the word with you. Um, read a chapter in the Bible for those of you who can read already and you're old enough. Um, and another one might be to memorize Psalm 119, verse 11. So um, if you think about those things, those are some things you could try this week. I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day. Um, and we'll see you again in a few minutes. Have a good day.